Hey there, it's me, Stefan Burchard, the Bowtie Coach, with your latest episode of the Networking Made Simple podcast. Networking Made Simple is an exploration of networking and social business connections for entrepreneurs, but especially introverted entrepreneurs like me. It has taken me 24 years to get to the place where I'm comfortable to be on camera or a microphone or in front of people. My journey is far from over. I have the same challenges I've always had as an introvert. I've just learned how to leverage those introverted traits into positive tools for building business relationships. This podcast is an exploration and sharing of those 24 years of experience, mistakes, and learnings. I will alternate between sharing from my own experiences and interviewing other entrepreneurs to learn from their journey. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey everybody, it's me, Stefan Burchard, the Bowtie Coach, and today, welcome to the latest episode of Networking Made Simple Podcast, the podcast that demystifies the art of networking, especially for introverted entrepreneurs. Today, I have a wonderful guest, Brian Rowley with Mouse Help. I've met Brian through a networking group, and I'll let Brian finish the introduction and tell us how we know each other, etc. Take right, it away, Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Rowley, and my business is mousehelp.com, where we provide compassionate care to people with technology. And that is a whole other issue. But I met Stefan at BNI Business Networking International, and yep. we meet once a week. And that's how I know Stefan, the Bowtie Realtor. There you go. The Get Bowtie it, Realtor, Bowtie Coach. Yeah. Oh, and when I filled in for Stefan at BNI, I put on the bow tie so I could be him to the best of my ability. The inimitable. And I didn't prompt. And I didn't prompt you. That was that's <laughs> what was amazing there. Uh, Brian, do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? I'm on both sides of that question because. I'm either an extroverted introvert or I'm an introverted extrovert, but whichever. <laughs> I've got I've got the yin and yang. I got both sides of that because I love to be alone where I can do research and write because that's how I learn best about things and about myself. And then I can better understand my position. So if someone gets me into doing an argument about something, I can say, well, here's what I think or what I think I've learned or what my research has led me to know. And that is helpful. But I need that alone time to regroup and get back to having a better core of understanding of myself. So then when I'm out and I do love an audience, I love to present. I love to speak. I'm in Toastmasters and I've been doing that for over 12 years. I'm pretty good at it now and I can help I can teach other people how to do it as well. But I think that's what makes me an extrovert is that I like to make a room full of people laugh. And if I can get you to feel something and lead you down a mm. path to the to the end goal of, so here's why we all should do our little part to save the world kind of an experience. Mm. That's where my extrovert side comes out in full force and can actually move you and change you and make you think about doing things. Amazing. I love that description. So how would you define business networking and why is it important for an entrepreneur? Oh, the thing about business networking is that in general, networking should be good for your business. But I think the networking comes before your business. Because, and what I mean by that is you can go to mixers. And even if your goal is to sell your service or product to all the people in the room, I think you're far better off to ask as many questions and learn as much as you can about the different people who are available to you. Because at some point they may say, here's something that's bothering me. Here's some place where I need help. Here's some pain that I have. And it may not be you who can solve that problem, but if you just met a guy who's a plumber on the other side of the room, and now you're talking to someone who has a leaky faucet, you can say, oh, I just met this really interesting guy. Let me take you over there and introduce you. That is networking. It doesn't have anything to do necessarily with me getting business, but helping other businesses get business is, is way more fun than, than anybody signing up for my services. I had a guy, I remember a guy saying that he was in a conversation with someone and he kept asking him questions about himself. And at the end of the conversation, he heard the guy say to someone else, that man is the most important person I've talked to today. And the other guy who had been asking the question hadn't said anything about himself to the guy, but that's what makes you interesting. Being interested in other people is what networking is about. And if it brings you business, good for you. I wish you the best. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How has networking impacted your journey? and your business success? Hmm. That to me is the, <laughs> the most interesting question because one of the first networking groups I was in had a very rigid structure to how the meetings were run and what you could or couldn't stay. And once I understood that, I realized this isn't the way I would run a meeting. This is not the way that I would run a business networking group. So I started my own business networking group and it did quite well because before I ever knew about BNI where the, the expression is giver's gain, I mm -hmm. said, you can come to this meeting in one of two ways. You can come with a handout, which means something for someone else, or you can come with your handout expecting to get something from someone else. So <laughs> if you're the kind who's bringing things for other people, keep coming. 
If you come in here with your hands out, expecting all this business to fall into your hands, I can show you the door and I'm not kidding. So <laughs> my entrepreneurial journey includes understanding what, what network is, what networking is and the value of it and how I want to do it, which is very helpful to me when I'm in other business networking groups to see how it's done and see, does it fit? Is it something I want to do? Is it something that I would do differently? If I stay, it means you're doing it right. <laughs> I'm still in BNI. So there's that. Are you feeling overwhelmed lately, frazzled and unproductive? Well, you're not alone. This is where coaching can come into play. As your Bowtie Coach, I specialize in helping introverted entrepreneurs navigate these waters. Together, we can tell her a self-care and business strategy that fits your unique personality and business goals, ensuring you don't just survive, but thrive. Click the link below to get a discovery call time with me and let's explore together. Bye. I don't know if anybody heard it and what he was just saying, but he has a learning mindset. So he's learning stuff from each of the different groups and venues that he's networking in. So in my opinion, that's probably one of the most important things is to learn, 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 learn. Because the more I learn, the better I get at whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it's real estate, coaching, networking, public speaking, doesn't matter. Learn, 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 learn. What are some specific challenges you've encountered in networking and what did you do to overcome that challenge? I have a, well, I already kind of shared the story about being in that first group and, and getting the idea that I want things kind of, I want things my way. <laughs> Let's just put it out there. And that's, I think that's universal. I think most people would like to have things going their way. And even mm -hmm. in, a, in a room full of people where there's a structure and a script and a formulaic process for presenting information, that there's some people who just squirm or turn out, tune out during certain parts of what's happening because they really would rather be getting information in a different way. But if it's good enough, you can stay and it's still good. And in that case, for me, one of the challenges I have is that I want to be running the show. I'm a really good MC, and then I can make sure things are going my way. So that's a challenge for me in networking to not try to take over immediately because at some <laughs> point I will be the president of the BNI group I'm in and yeah. I'm just warning you up front, that's coming. So that's one of my challenges is to hold myself back and get as much as I can from the group so I really understand how it's done before I step in and open my big mouth and go, hey, I'll be your president. <laughs> what advice would you give to an introverted entrepreneur with regards to networking? Ah, there's an exercise that, well, there's a philosophy first. So let's just say that every time you go out, every time you leave your house and go out into the world, you think to yourself, they could be the day where I meet someone who changes everything. And if that were to happen and you were open to it, you saw the benefit of it, then it would be easier for you the next day to say the same thing. And it could happen mm. on any given day. You might come across, you as the realtor might come across someone who says, you know, everybody in my family wants to move to Florida where we're going to set up our own little complex and live together kumbaya for the rest of our lives. Can you help us sell our homes? Yeah, it's going to be a good day for you, right? So yeah. that could happen any any time you leave and you are out in the world. You don't have to be an extrovert, but if you're open to the possibility that you might meet somebody who's going to be good for you or who's going to give you the chance to make the world a better place for them, far more magnanimous, right? <laughs> Those yeah. things can happen. But you have to yeah. leave your house and you have to be out in the world and you have to accept that you're part of a great big picture. I shouldn't say you have to. You don't have to do anything. You can stay home. <laughs> sell, sell homes or provide data on home sales all you want. And you might just do fine without being an extrovert ever. But if you are an introvert and it starts to wear you out when you're at a big party or a big gathering, some networking event, a mixer, whatever, you can always say to someone that you're really engaged with, hey, it's kind of noisy and, and stuffy in here. Do you mind if we just step over here where it's a little more quiet and then you can really be yourself as an introvert with a one-to-one -one experience versus all the noise and all the energy that probably isn't is probably draining you of energy. So that's what I would say to an introvert who has to be in situations that are uncomfortable for them. It's actually really good about stepping aside. I love that because um, a lot of introverts will get overwhelmed in a big environment. And one of the things I teach in my class, networking for introverts, is I tell spin around to where your back is to the to the room. So that way it's not as overwhelming because the visual cues are very, you know, it can it can produce anxiety for somebody who's a diehard introvert. So I know for myself, I will do that. I'll spin around and I'll keep my back to the room. So that way I'm looking at the person in the eyes and there's fewer distractions because Lord knows we have so many distractions in the world nowadays. And I just think that's so rude. <laughs>
How can an introvert build connections without feeling overwhelmed or drained? I think to me that it's harder for me to process that concept because what I'm getting from interactions from other people builds me and doesn't drain me. It's the times when, I, I think I mentioned it in a presentation recently, where someone doesn't know what they want, but they're crystal clear on what they don't want. So they're coming there. So many of their expressions are on the negative of this isn't good. And every time I see my website, it, it makes my head spin and I don't know what I'm going to do. And so they, they're so focused on how things aren't good for them that it can be more difficult to get from that person. Well, what is it that would make it better for you? So if the question is still about not being drained, I would say try to get to the question where, so what is your pain and where, how would you find relief? If you can, if you can get that information, that is value that you now have with you. So instead of you giving something that would drain you, try to, try to understand that you're getting for yourself information that can be useful that you might need for a referral to someone else down the line. So that's networking and introverts. I've met a few. <laughs> <laughs> so what I think I'm hearing is really listen and listen for the gold. Yeah. Get, get the goods because the, the things the that gold. they share with you and tell you about themselves, it adds to you. It doesn't take away from you. So that's, yeah. that's drained is kind of a, or overwhelmed. I get that, but being drained by it is, well, what did you get from it? Maybe <laughs> when you're done with a meeting or something, get a notepad out and write down here, here are the things I learned about this person. Here's what this person does, needs, wants, what they like, all that kind of thing. So think if you're going to collect the information, being able to retain it is important. So maybe that, that'll get you off your introvert side and say, all right, what am I going to do with this? That, you know, what, what gold did I collect and what am I going to spend it on? Nice. So let's get a little personal. Yeah. Hope you don't mind. Don't mind. Do you have a go-to book or resource for inspiration? I did. And in fact, I gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Because I liked it so much and I, I wanted the person I gave it to think about what's in it. It's The book is Self-Reliance, which is actually the title of an essay by Ralph Waldo Emerson. But this book had a pendium of articles curated by the author of all the different snippets of wisdom that you can get from Emerson. So it wasn't ever a complete essay. It was paragraphs from different things that Emerson had written. And it was very helpful for me to, to be able to say that there's someone who's who's one of the greatest intellectual minds of the 19th century. The guy lived yeah. in the 1850s and 1860s when Lincoln was president. Yeah. Okay, so that's a long, yeah. long time ago for me. But he thinks like I do in so many ways and see things, these things the way I do. But he's got a whole lot more of a vocabulary than I have currently. So I've got some catching up to do. But that guy was really good at telling you how it is. One of my favorite things from him was on originality where he said, there's nothing original. Nothing I'm telling you is original. You could have gone and done all the research research I've done and have discovered these things for yourself. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <Want that. laughs> That's Emerson. That's Emerson. For those of you that don't know, Ralph Waldo Emerson, a philosopher from the 1900s, very advanced philosopher. And, 1800s. Um, yeah, 1800s. Uh, yeah, the first time I read Emerson, I had to reread it at least two or three times before I found out. Oh, now I get what he's trying to say. Because it's <laughs> it's high level philosophy, folks. So you got to take it paragraph by paragraph, but really good stuff. Share it with a friend Brian. and ask them, what do you think? There you go. There you go. That's, that's a way to deal reading with Reading club. Yeah, reading group. Brian, how do you begin and end your day? Usually with thank you. And <laughs> I love it. Because honestly, I wake up. Sometimes, and I think oftentimes the first words out of my mouth are, I'm so happy to be waking up with you. And I'm saying that to my wife. And at the end of the day, most often the last thing I say is, I love you, sweetheart. And that's how my days begin and end. I used to do a speech about gratitude being the first thing that I would think of is how thankful I am. And it still is the case because I'm very grateful to be married to my best friend. But that you're not promised your next breath. So be grateful when you open your eyes. Yay, I get to be me again, <laughs> like that. Yeah. And the fact that you can get out of bed, okay, now you're gonna get me on the preaching side where I say, look, not everybody has a bed to get out of and some who <laughs> do have beds can't get out. So yeah. you got a bunch more things to be thankful for. Do you have indoor yeah. plumbing? Do you have a coffee maker? Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah, we take some things for granted. So I start every day with being grateful for all I have and, and how wonderful it is to be alive again. Amazing. Thank you, Brian. I definitely love gratitude. So if people want to get a hold of you, Brian, I'm going to have your information in the show notes, but is there any website or social media or phone number or email? All of those, all of the above. 
And so, is there any one of those you prefer? Yeah, mousehelp.com. If you go to my website, you'll see it just looks like a tech guy's website. And it says, here's my contact information. Hold up your phone to the QR code and it'll take you right to my book time with Brian webpage where you can actually schedule. I don't, even, I don't mind if you schedule 15 minutes with me and you just want to talk. That's okay. I won't charge you anything for it. So, so get in touch with me. Go to my website. If you want to talk, my phone number is 442-236-4067. And all of that's on the website as well. There, every way you can think of every social media platform that I know of, I'm on it. You can find me, mousehelp.com. That's where I am. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom and your networking experience. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I enjoyed the process and the questions and the answers. And I wish you all the success, Stefan, in uh, your podcast and with your Bowtie Realtor business. Thank you. To learn more about Networking Made Simple, make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey, you may also enjoy my YouTube channel at Bowtie Coach. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll join me on the next episode. Bye.